Another strange face in Photo Park was Michael O'Connell. Thanks very much. Um, I feel there's a fellow inside here somewhere with cold hands catching on to me. Two years is a long time to be out and come back in a very short event, you know. Um, if it was longer, I think I'd be happier, but it's, you know, go from the very beginning and, and um, there's very little time to actually get used to it and, you know, get, get things sorted out. Well, I think, Mick, after one run, you'll be back to your old self. Thanks very much. I hope so. I hope you're right. Thank you. Well, there's an old saying, and that behind every great man, there's a great woman. What do you think of that? Gosh, you floored me on that one. I think this great man does it all by himself. <laughs> um, it's great to be back. You know, courtesy of Glenside Homes, they've made it possible for us this weekend. Um, we're not used to the car, and the sprint being just 2.7 miles, well, we'll take it as it comes. We'll certainly drive as hard as we can. We hope, and that everything goes very well for you. I hope so too, and thank you. Thank you very much. John O'Sullivan, you're about to have your first taste of rally driving. Are you looking forward to it? I think I am, yes, after the practice runs. It's, it's a bit nerve-wracking, though. Uh, would you be completely happy with Sean, do you think? Yes, he keeps telling me that it's quite safe and that everything is under control, and, and he's assured me that he's capable, so I'll just keep my fingers crossed. We hope you win enjoy it, Donna. I hope so, too. It's, it's different. I haven't done anything like this before, so I, I am looking forward to it, yeah. Thank you. John Price from Wales, driving this immaculate Renault 5 Turbo. Are you looking forward to today's event? Yes, I am. Uh, we've come over early for Donegal, and it's a good opportunity to test the car because it's all new, and uh, it's nothing like being competitive, you know, to, to have it in an actual competition to test it. Today is staged, Jimmy, 2.7 miles. Some of it is pretty loose. Is that going to worry you at all? It won't worry us, but uh, this is a full tarmac spec race car, and it's not suitable for loose. So we don't really know what the scene is today. What kind of tyres will be using? It's going to be difficult, I think, to make the right choice. We brought a selection of them. We have some knobblies that we never put on before because we didn't decide to drive this car in forestry or, or loose events. And we have some wets uh, with extra grooves in them just in case in the, it's, it's very mucky and slippy. And we brought some intermediates as well with a very soft compound. So hopefully between the, the three of those, we must be able to get some type of, 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 of grip, I would hope. Marie Maloney, you're seated at number 24. You will probably win in the ladies' class and hoping to build on that placing. Hopefully, um, provided everything goes well for us, we hope to improve on the placing. Are you completely happy with the way the car has been behaving of late? Yeah, I am, yeah. The car has been behaving very well. Um, we've had no problems with it, really. OK, thanks very much, Marie. Thank you. Bones O'Connor, you're better known as an organiser than a competitor. You're obviously looking forward though, to today's event. That's right, yeah. I'm, I'm hoping to change that today you know, and become better known as a competitor than as an organiser. I've been, I've been out of the sport for too long. It's about nine months since I've driven. So. And you'll go flat out from stage one, I presume? Well, I hope so. We'll go as quick as I can. But uh, I hope I don't go flat against a wall or a tree or a crocodile or whatever they have inside in the wildlife park. I think there's no fear of that, Bones. Thanks very much. Not at all. Thank you. Dick O'Brien, you're Chief Marshal here today. That's you right. certainly have your hands full. Are you coping okay? Well, we seem to be fairly well um, covered out. Right. We have about, uh, we have over 100 marshals out today. And being a short route, the marshals are fairly thick on the ground. Um, so hopefully everything will be safe. And if the, if the spectators uh, behave themselves and stay where they should, we hope for no problems. And we have Dr. Oren here with no less than five ambulances uh, on hand and a helicopter as well for emergencies. So um, I think it all depends now on the clock of the world. The weather, if he's, if he's um, kind to us, he should go off all right. We wish you the very best, Dick. Uh, thank you very much indeed. John Coyne and Crispy Farrell lead the field away for the Commodore Photo Wildlife Park Rally Sprint. Second along, Demi Fitzgerald and Leo White in their well-known Chevette. John Price now in his rebuilt Renault 5 Turbo looking very, very well. 
Now, a very welcome return by the O'Connells, doing nicely, sponsored by Glenside Homes for this event. Dan Daly, all the way from Belfast. And he is followed by local man Sean Delaney, who is Don O'Sullivan, the well-known Cork radio personality, uh, in the hot seat and enjoying it. David Gould, going well in his little sunbeam. Ray Benskin was destined not to finish the stage, and in fact, we will be seeing this stage from several points of view throughout this film. It was an interesting idea to hold the rally in the Photo Wildlife Park, and it came about following an initial meeting in December 1982, when it was decided by the directors of the Cork Motor Club to approach University College Cork with a view to holding the rally sprint in the photo estate, the proceeds from which would go to the Wildlife Fund. Professor Raftery agreed to the plan, and when the Commodore Hotel Cove offered sponsorship, it was a case of long-term planning to have a unique event in Irish motorsport. Chief organizers were clerk of the course Richard O'Rourke and Chief Marshal Dick O'Brien, who together with their assistants set about converting the peaceful woodland and parkland roads into a high-speed rally stage. When this was being done, due consideration had to be given to such things as spectator vantage points, car parking, and the location of a paddock. Eventually, with the help of Professor Raftery, a suitable stage was chosen, and work began to organize over 100 marshals, 400 straw bales, and over two miles of rope, together with stakes and arrows, paddock bays for the service vehicles, road signs, and even provide a helicopter landing pad. Special attention was paid to safety. Six ambulances were provided, along with a high-speed Range Rover complete with oxygen and cutting equipment, all under the expert and enthusiastic eye of Dr. Jim Doran. Irish Helicopters Limited generously provided a Bulkoff 105 helicopter for possible emergency use, and the Army Transport Corps sent along three troop carriers to aid with communications. Further up the stage, we see where Ray Benskin falls into trouble, and this must have been one of his shortest rallies ever. Motor Club marshals have their hands full with Ray's car as Sammy Hawkins comes through the woods going well and looking as if he just might collect the car but changing his mind. Bill Murphy from Dublin with the Triumph manages to wiggle the tail in an impressive way. Again, missing Ray Benskin's car. and Vincent Mead is having a good go. Ray Benskin's car being pushed into the jungle along with the giraffes, but watch Martin Grandin go. He is quickly to be the sensation of the event. Douglas and Cashman now going well in their escort, and in fact, 
On this stage, they were equal fit. Billy Daly's golf looks very well, having been pretty comprehensively wrecked uh, a week before this event on the Circuit of Munster Rally. Marie Maloney now in the dealer Opal Team Ireland is Scone 400 looking very large. Gleason now with the Avenger. And getting it all a bit wrong are Sullivan and O'Regan. Husband and wife team now of David and Catherine Hyde going well with their little opal. Bill Murphy's big triumph proves a handful, and once again, the marshals have to come out of the trees. Many hands make light work, even of the big triumph. At the end of this, the first stage, John Coyne would be running four seconds behind Demi Fitzgerald, who had a good lead and was looking well at this point. John Price was lying third with the Renault Turbo, and Mick and Nan O'Connell were equal fourth. John, there's one round gone, and I think you're going to go in for the second round, are you? I believe I'm committed to, yeah. Yeah, we're, we're hoping to cut a few seconds off, maybe. Have you found the first one pretty frightening? Frankly, yes. <laughs> yes, it was. There's an awful lot of power in the car, you know. You, you get a fair boot from behind when you start. Thanks very much, Donna. Thank you. Martin Brandon, while seeded 21st, was in fact sharing fourth place with the O'Connell. John, after the first run, you're four seconds behind Dimmy. Do you think you'll be able to bring it back? We'll certainly try. Um, the first run, we were taking things a little gently. There's so many surface changes out there, from dry tar to loose to mud, that we were taking things just a little bit easy to s try out how the tires would work on that surface. And we'll try a bit harder next time. Mick O'Connell, you look way more relaxed than when we were talking to you on today. How has it been for you? Um, yes, yeah, certainly since this morning I think things have improved quite a lot. Uh, the track has been quite slippery and um, not sure we've changed our tyres now and we hope that uh, the, the change will Im improve our times. We're a bit off the pace but um, next run we hope will be better. Jimmy Fitzgerald, four seconds of a lead after the first run. That must be pretty handy at this stage. Well, it's averaging two seconds a mile on loose, which is, we're very happy with that. I don't say that we'll, we'll win, but certainly we'll give it a great try now. Normally, we don't drive on loose, and uh, this car isn't suitable for loose. But just, we just got it together on that run, and we're very, very happy. 
John, we think you're in third place, about eight seconds behind Dimmy. Are you pleased with that? Yeah, I think that's a pretty good start. Um, it was very, very slippery. I think it's drying out now for the second run, so perhaps we can get a bit more power down. Have you found the loose sections coming off of the tarmac very difficult? Yeah, you've got to watch it. Um, I don't know what it'll be like on the second run, but it was, there was a lot of gravel about here. Nice talking to you, John. Thanks. David, one round gone here today. How have you found it? Very enjoyable. I've never driven on loose before, so it was a new experience for me, and I thoroughly enjoyed it. Had you got any problems with tyres going from tarmac to loose? Well, I'm running on tarmac tyres, and unfortunately, when you hit the loose, they are inclined to get a bit skitterish. But um, when you come off the loose onto the tyre, you had a much better advantage. Thanks very much, David. Thank you. This is the early part of stage two, and second place man John Coyne has changed his tyres during the service halt, as indeed has the leader, Demi Fitzgerald. But Coyne is going very quickly, and Demi Fitzgerald is not too happy with his tyres on this stage. Sean Delaney, you've one round completed. Are you happy at the way things have gone for you? No, I'm not, no. Very bad times. I had 2-7 there, which is really gone back a bit, like, you know. Very slippy. I, probably put, I use the A60s, which I probably use the wrong tyres. So I'm changing out of width for this time around, so you can do any better. So this is only keep going and hope for the best. Thanks very much, Sean. OK. Vincent Mead, uh, usual navigator with Richie Healy, today driving the Chevette, how have you found it? I think it's a lovely event really, a bit slippy but it's nice, we're having a small braking problem, but nothing much, it's very enjoyable out there, very nice indeed, we should have more of them I think, on Sunday.
At the end of the second stage, John Coyne has pulled back five seconds from the former leader, Demi Fitzgerald, and now leads the rally by one second from this man. John Price, the visitor from Wales, is still holding third, but the O'Connells now have dropped the fourth place and are running fifth. Dan Daly is doing very well and keeping up well with the leaders. Sean Delaney is still terrorizing Donna O'Sullivan. Martin Grandin, you had a spectacularly fast time the second run. I think you're enjoying yourself. Yeah, well, <clears throat> we, we go well in the, in, in the loose, you know. Uh, as you know, the car is front wheel drive, and we have uh, we just planned the four nobblies. We had only two at the front, first run, but we're still, we're still going well, and we're happy. We are, uh, I think we're fourth, giant fourth, with uh, Mick O'Connell. We had both at the same times, I think. But enjoying it. And everything to fight for for a top three place, I presume. Oh, we'll, be, we'll be trying the next time, definitely trying. We know you will, Martin. Thanks very much. Demi, one run to go. You're one second behind. You have it all to play for. <laughs> well, that time what happened, um, we tried a bit too hard on the car line. The left were braking much too late as if it was racers. We spun off and the car stalled, so we lost quite a considerable amount of time. Ten seconds, maybe ten seconds plus. So there's only a second in it now, so it's Hobson's choice. Anything can happen. So we'll try and stay cooler than we were the last time and hope that we get it together. I'm sure you will, Demi. We look forward to meeting you later on. We certainly try. John, at the moment, you're one second in front of Demi. Is it going to be enough? Well, we'll try and make it more. But uh, it's still anybody's race, you know. I think the last lap was a question of who went slowest rather than who went quickest. And we both had our problems. I think Demi had a spin and we had two half spins. And it was really a question of which of us got more overexcited. But uh, hopefully now we can steady down a bit on this one and take a real gob of time off him. Barbara, how are your nerves been looking at this fellow out around that last stage? <laughs> I didn't see him at all. <laughs> I don't mind. You take a very active interest in the, the rallying affairs yourself. I do. Well, I either stay at home or I come, so I come. OK, Barbara, nice talking to you. Thank you. <laughs> Dan, two runs gone. How has it been for you? <laughs> rough <laughs> very very rough and very very slippery not much grip no grip at all we spun the car on the first run and we lost maybe 10 seconds and then she cut out at another junction we lost another few seconds but we had a better run a better time in the second run so we hope we have a similar time on the sec third run will be all right <laughs> <laughs> okay then, thanks for your Thank you. At the third last corner, Sammy, you overshot that junction. Can you recall exactly what happened? Well, I can recall it, alright. I lost, I suppose, four or five seconds there. I, I just f had forgotten it was there, to be quite honest. And uh, when I realised it was too late, we, it was a big stout tree on the exit, and there was no way I wanted to hit that. So we just braked and went straight on. the first part of the last stage and John Coyne leads by one second. Demi Fitzgerald is determined as ever in second place. John Price still going well with his immaculate little Renault Turbo. And the O'Connells back in the rally business in a big way. Dan Daly still with his problems and his good humour. Sean Delaney going nicely with his well turned out escort. And David Gould really enjoying himself just outside the top ten. And Sammy Hawkins and Sean Hanley managed to visit the countryside once again.
Happy daily, your GTI is looking way better than it was this day week. How has it been going for you so far? Uh, well, I've been out on the first run, so naturally I've been quite nervous, but I think I'll probably stay nervous for the rest of the day. At least get one event behind me again before I start doing any more trills or spills. <laughs> uh, well, we had a hard week's work. We started on Tuesday morning and there was a number of nights and right through to yesterday, you know, really, before we finished it. So collectively, between all the men that worked on it anyway, total 200 hours on the car. So I suppose hours can do anything if you put a message, you know. Um, there should be more of them. My first time ever competing in a rally sprint. But uh, the organisation here is something fantastic. There's um, plenty of time for service and um, great relaxation. So it's a good Sunday outing.
Catherine Hyde, navigator for Davis, have you enjoyed yourself so far? Well, it's been a marvellous rally and very well organised. I must say that the organisers have great credit to them, the way they've set out the car park here today. And apart from the few rough patches, we've had a very pleasant run, although we had one scare on the first run through. And um, probably lost us about 10 seconds, but other than that, we can't complain. We're doing quite handy. Michael and Anne O'Connell, fifth position. That's a very good result after your long retirement. Um, well, I'm quite happy having finished fifth. Um, one of my main concerns this morning was that I damaged the car or something because going out and trying fairly hard in an event such as this with the weather conditions and the track un unpredictable is not easy. And I think that's one of my, my greatest worries that I would sort of damage a nice car, you know. But um, I'm happy enough. If, if it had gone on for another few runs, I think I'd improve quite a bit on that because we were improving all the time. It just wasn't enough time. <laughs> okay. Martin Grandin, you have proved to be the sensation by finishing fourth. You must be very pleased. Yeah, I'm, I'm very pleased, all right, but uh, uh, the navigator really uh, inspired me today. <laughs> we, ha we, have, we have a new navigator today and uh, he's actually uh, from Fiat it Italy. He was sitting with Penti Auricula around Mandelo Park before um, Sacred of Ireland, so he really gave me a couple of pints just today, you know. That's Jeffrey Smith from Fear Ireland. He is only unbelievable. But we, yes, we had a great run. Um, the loose really suits us. Um, we had um, uh, 182 on that last run now, which um, probably took about how many seconds after? About 14 seconds after our first run, is it? Yeah. And we were really motoring now. And, um, it really, I really think at this stage this car is more suitable for forestry run and, and rough events like this rather than out no tarmac. John Price, you have finished third. The long trip from Wales must be worth it. Yes, it's been a very good day. Funny go. What did you particularly enjoy about today's event? Um, the, the change of surfaces, you know, you've got to, it's only to drive on tarmac all the time, but to suddenly go on to loose and very slippery, you've got to adapt to it very quick, and it's that as a challenge. Second place to me, where do you think the rally was won and lost? <laughs> on, the, on the end of the straight, on the second run, where we spun and the car stalled, it lost 10 seconds, maybe excess, that was it. That's, when you're talking about rally sprinting, it's only two point something miles. You can't afford to put one leg out of place at all so that's it but John Coyne victor by four seconds what for you was the highlight of today's event oh definitely the last run um, we took a big gamble just before the last run and went on to racing tires from the knobblies that we'd had on for the first two and uh, Demi stayed on the knobblies so it was a an all-or-nothing kind of decision if we happened to make the wrong one we would have been the same adrift to him that he ended up behind us so it was, it was pretty good. We tried to drive very clean and tidy through the last time and keep the car pointing in a straight line. It seems to have worked.